are these people? Good dude, James Baldwin. Um, I, I, I watched, I think, a m- multiple versions of him on the Dick Cavett show and other mm-hmm. shows back then. Had had a lot to say to people. Most of it I liked, so you know, well ahead of his time. But yeah, you're reading some of his views on Palestine. Yeah, so he didn't say much, but what he said about Palestine, I think, was very spot on. And given that he ended up moving abroad to Europe later in life, and being able to kind of note the connections as far as oppression in the world, I think his words were very timely. Um, And just personally, I actually have a picture of him above my computer actually so i see him every day mm-hmm. um but i love when he speaks so i definitely wanted to find a clip of him speaking um and i find one that actually does apply well liberation in general but what he says definitely applies to palestinians if you change the color uh, that. Dick Cavett. Uh, very young dick yep. Cavett. so you probably have seen many of you have probably seen this clip Flowing around, but I wanted to play this. I think this will kind of give a good appetizer for what we're going to, um, what we're going to read regarding what he said regarding Palestine later. So you can go ahead, Reeve. If we were white, if we were Irish, if we were Jewish, if we were Poles, if we had, in fact, in your mind, a frame of reference. Our heroes would be your heroes too. Nat Turner would be a hero for you instead of a threat. Malcolm X might still be alive. And it, you know, everyone is very proud of brave little Israel. A state against which I have nothing. You know, I don't want to be misinterpreted. I'm not an anti-Semite. But you know, when the Israelis pick up guns or the Poles or the Irish or any white man in the world says, give me liberty or give me death, the entire white world applauds. When a black man says exactly the same thing, word for word he is judged a criminal and treated like one and everything possible is done to make an example of this bad nigger so there won't be any more like him right so still applies yes still yeah just he mentioned israelis but as reverend shark said uh complexion for the protection you know so if you are melanin deficient, I would say, <laughs> yeah. um, it's easy for you to say, I have a right to defend myself, right? It's a lot harder if you're a little more melanated to say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and this goes so, for all those gats and flag flyers too out there. I see you. Those don't tread on me people, you know? Right. Like, those melanated people got straps too. I'm just saying, you know, right. be careful out there. This shit goes both ways, dog. Um, um, anyway. So I wanted to read this article. This article is actually uh, from 2014 um, from socialistworker.org, uh, written by Paul Heidman, who writes, How Baldwin Saw Palestine. So let's get into it in terms of what he wrote. With bombs again exploding Palestinian homes and lives in Gaza. Oh. But wait, I thought the oh, bombs started. I thought it was October ago. 7th. I, I know, God, but this article I, was written in 2014. Are you telling me the media in Israel would lie to us? I, that seems so unlikely. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, crazy. <laughs> um, July, July. That's wild. When? What year? 2014. Um, 2014? Man, how did they miss that? They must have missed that. Um. (laughs) Uh, It is helpful, or comforting at least, to return to the classic works of the struggle against Zionism. Edward Said's Zionism from the standpoint of its victims comes to mind here, as do the poems of Mahoud Darwish. One wide writer who isn't often classed as part of this tradition, but should be, is James Baldwin. Here's a passage from Baldwin's last novel, Just Above My Head, 1978, in okay. which he addresses the subject of terrorism. Well, can you zoom in? Because this yes, is. Yes, okay. can. There you go. Thank you. I was traveling before the days of electronic surveillance, 
before the hijackers and terrorists arrive. For the arrival of these people, the people in the seats of power have only themselves to blame. Who indeed has hijacked more than England has, for example, or who is more skilled in the uses of terror than my own unhappy country? Yes, I know. Nevertheless, children, what goes around comes around. What you send out comes back to you. A terrorist is called that only because he does not have the power of the state behind him. Indeed, he has no state, which is why he is a terrorist. Scroll down, please. The state, at bottom, and when the chips are down, rules by means of a terror made legal. That is how Franco ruled so long, and is the undeniable truth concerning South Africa. No one called the late J. Edgar Hoover a terrorist, though that is precisely what he was. And if anyone wishes now, in this context, to speak of civilized values, or democracy, or morality, you will pardon this old ninja if he puts his hand before his mouth, and Snickers if he laughs at you. I've endured your morality for a very long time, and still crawled out, out, under that, out of that dung heap. All that the slave can learn from his master is how to be a slave, and that is not morality. Yep. <clears throat> Reading this passage today, one is struck by its precinct. 20 years before 9-11, Alwyn eviscerated Bush and now Obama's pious apologize on the, for the war on terror. War on terror. The contemporary relevance of the passage, however, can obscure its own context, which is just as notable. Baldwin's emphasis here on stateless peoples and hijackings make it clear that the occasion for his reflections is the Palestinian struggle which during the 1970s especially took the form of hijackings meant to draw international attention to the occupation. Palestine came to be a prominent issue during the Plower years as Black radicals are identified with anti-colonial movements embrace the Palestinian struggle against Israel. For more on this story, check out Alex's, Alex Lupin's Geographies of Liberation. This embrace led to allegations of anti-sentimentism which were not always justified against black power figures like Malcolm X, for example, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately culminating in Johnson's publication's decision to shut down Black World, an important black cultural and political journal over a supposedly anti-Semitic article about Zionism. In this context, Baldwin's writings on the subject, though brief, display a remarkable clarity as he unhesitantly declares that Israel represents imperialism not Jewish in self-determination. Thus, it is in 1972, in his essay, Take Me to the Water, Baldwin recounted his reasons for not settling in Israel when he became an expatriate in the late 1940s. And if I have fled to Israel, a state created for the purpose of protecting Western interests, I would have been in a yet tighter bind. On which side of Jerusalem would I have decided to live? Here, Baldwin displays, displays an awareness that, in 1948, most of the left still lacked. When he made the decision to flee the U.S., Baldwin realized he could scarcely accomplish his goal by settling, settling in the country than replicating our own bloody frontier days. Indeed, Baldwin's clarity on this question stands out from almost any analysis on the left during the period of Israel's perp. Stalinism, in particular, played a destructive role here, as the USSR's eagerness for an ally in the region led it to jump in as the second country to recognize Israel. The first, of course, was the United States. In its wake, Stalinists and their fellow travelers across the world refused to take a principled stand for Palestinian self-determination. Baldwin, always an iconoclast, took a different route. Baldwin's most substantiated, substantial writing on Palestine came in 1979 with his open letter to the born again. This letter was occasioned by Jimmy Carter's dismissal of Martin Luther King's former aide, Andrew Young, from his position as ambassador to the UN because of his decision to meet with a Palestinian Liberation Organization delegation. Baldwin is clear, again, clear on the circumstances of Israel's birth. Say hey, that five times Jews fast. The Palestinian Jews Delegation Pal of Liberation Organization. 
That was a mouthful. Yeah. Um, Jews and Palestinians know of broken promises. From the time of the Balfour Declaration during World War I, Palestine was under five British mandates, and England promised the land back and forth to the Arabs or the Jews, depending on which horse seemed to be in the lead. The Zionists, as distinguished from the people known as the Jews, using, as someone put it, the available political machinery, i.e. colonialism, e.g. E the British Empire, promised the British that if the territory were given to them, the British Empire would be safe forever. But absolutely no one cared about the Jews, and it is worth observing that non-Jewish Zionists are very frequently anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. Baldwin goes on to speak of Europe's history of anti-Semitism, the civilized, the civilized the civilizational links between the Inquisition and Franco. The situation in Palestine, he makes clear, is not the result of terrorism or Jewish malfeasance, but European imperialism. But the state of Israel was not created for the salvation of the Jews. It was created for the salvation of Western interests. This is what is becoming clear. I must say it was always clear to me. The Palestinians have been paying for the British colonial policy of divide and rule, and for Europe's guilty Christian conscience for more than 30 years. The collapse of the Shah not only revealed the death of Pius Carter's concern for human rights, it also revealed who supplied oil to Israel and whom Israel supplied arms. It happened to be, to spell it out, white South Africa. So this was back in the 70s that Baldwin was calling this out. Uh, regarding the, I guess at that point, soon to be, if not already established, apartheid um, in South Africa, given that time, and how and Israel is tied to it. Um, Baldwin's sharp sense of geopolitics, his grasp of the Gulf, which separates Jewishness from Zionism, and his willingness to locate the source of the problem in 1948 for more than 30 years all would put him on the left edge of the Palestinian solidarity movement today. 30 years ago in the United States, he must have felt as if he resided in the most desolate political wilderness. Studied today as a writer of sexuality and gender, or of civil rights, Baldwin's international radicalism remains in the hinterland. Those of us struggling to make good on his vision of real justice in the Middle East have a right and a duty today to claim Baldwin's voice for our side, and in doing so, help bring his radicalism the recognition it deserves. So any thoughts? Short, but I think no. very poignant. I think so, but too. Any thoughts? I mean, I mean, it sounds like he was right on way too early for his time. Um, you know, I mean, I've heard Baldwin talk about all sorts of stuff, religion as well, right? I, mm -hmm. I think the classic one is... is where it's like, why would he be nonviolent when, like, that's never been the case for his people? It's always been violence right. against his, right? Right. It, you know, and I think that that he speaks to that here as well, right? Where it's, right. You know, it's the classic: the minute someone with a little more melanin or isn't part of the you know, NATO alliance decides to, you know stand for themselves it's no 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 we need your resources though. so uh, you know but yeah good stuff so i definitely should read more of him i have yet to yeah. do that at least one right yeah it um hmm? like at least one what what which book from baldwin should people read that's the question uh well, if you don't want to necessarily read, if those of you who are not readers, I am not your Negro, it would be a good, that came out, when did that come out? 2017. Mm. Um, that would be a good book uh, to read. Um, Notes of a Native Son, I think, would be a good start. Um, as well as The Fire Next Time is also a good one. Um, I think I gave the fire next time Peel Street could talk. Yeah. Um, so, um, Giovanni's room. I wonder what that. Yeah. Is. 
Yeah, but I would definitely, if you're wanting to start on Baldwin, I'll say Notes of a Native Son. I think would be a good start for okay. those, for people who want who are interested to know. And again, many of his short books are very short; they're easy read. Um, but he packs a lot in such a short read, depending on the fire next the time. Yeah, another good one. Okay, mm -hmm. good to know. Um, well. You know, talking about these things is why we're demonetized. So you can go to codashv.com slash Indie News Network. You know, leave us, leave us a tip, a little super chat there. If you're in the live chat, you can put exclamation mark donate. We'll get your message pulled up on screen for everyone to read. Um, you can also go to Rockfin and Rumble and support us on other platforms if you want. Uh, link in the description below. Uh, you can also like and subscribe. Hit share. You know, comment. Let us know what you think. What do you think about Baldwin? Um, yeah. Also, if you've read any books of his, let us know what title yeah. and what you thought. 